Hey there, builders. Today we're going to be taking a look at animating or reanimating this cheap old skeleton prop. We're going to be using some servos, and for those of you who don't know what a servo is, it's basically a tiny electric motor we can control with pulses for accurate positioning. They're commonly used in remote control cars and planes and robotics and are perfectly suited for this type of application. We're gonna start by removing the skeleton's head. Walk out the door, you see someone that you know and they ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Yeah, so it turns out the head screws out of the neck instead of popping out. That's okay, we'll set the rest of the skeleton to the side for now and focus on the head. I'm gonna cut open the base of the skull to give us access to the inside of the head. And I'm gonna do that with a sharp hobby knife. Basically, I'm just poking it into the plastic and wiggling it until it pokes through the other side. And then slowly working my way all the way around. The back of the skull is pretty thin and the knife moves really quickly through this area. So you wanna be careful that you're not applying too much pressure or you may end up cutting somewhere you didn't intend to cut. The ultimate goal of this project is to have the mouth of the skeleton move to a pre-recorded audio track. I'll show you in a later video how I accomplished that using a custom-built PCB. With the base of the skull removed, I could untie this thread using the wire cutters to pull the small knot loose at the top. And then I reinstalled the jaw. With the skull opened up, it's time to go get our servos and rods. We're gonna use the rods to transfer the rotational motion of the servo into linear motion to actuate the jaw. And I'll show that in detail here in a minute. Before I do the final glue up of this servo, I wanna center it using a servo tester. It'll be next to impossible to tighten the screw in the servo horn after it's been installed. Centering the servo ensures that we have the same amount of up and down travel. There's a perfect little shelf on the top of the teeth inside the skull for these micro servos to sit on. A servo tester allows you to center the servo and also actuate it using a potentiometer. This is great for testing the mechanical properties of your props without hooking it to the rest of your circuitry. Mounting the servo is really just a matter of adding hot glue anywhere that it touches the skull and waiting for that first layer to dry and then going back around the servo with another bead of hot glue to really solidify its position. Don't worry, it's easy enough to get these out of here if you don't want them in here permanently, but at about a dollar each, I'm just gonna leave these in this prop. You wanna end up with the servo horn basically right in the middle of the roof of the mouth. Here's some of that brass rod that I mentioned earlier. This stuff is great for transferring the rotational servo motion into linear. And for us, we're gonna be transferring it back into rotational once it's installed in the jaw. This will give us the nice open and closing motion that we're looking for with only a small brass wire visible from the outside. Again, I'm using the servo tester to center the servo horn. Then I'm just measuring by hand where I want to bend the brass rod so it will pass through the jaw. I like to use a pair of pliers to get real sharp 90 degree bends. Once I've roughly figured out where I want the brass rod to go through the jaw, I'll mark it with a sharp filled screwdriver and then drill all the way through. This should be a nice tight fit so we don't have any backlash, but it should also be loose enough that it can pivot. I'm gonna straighten this brass rod and run it all the way through the jaw. You can really see here how easy it is to bend these rods, which makes later adjustments a breeze.
The servo action here is pushing the brass rod in and out of the jaw, so I'm just gonna bend it back under and make kind of a staple. This will go along with the rest of my build, but if you don't wanna do this, you might look into adding some type of collar to prevent the rod from sliding in and out of the jaw. I test fit the base of the skull and trim where necessary so that the rod that actuates the jaw doesn't contact it anywhere. Moving on to the neck portion of this prop, I'm basically just gluing a servo horn into the piece of threaded neck plastic that we snapped off earlier. The hot glue did not end up holding this very well. I did have to go back and replace this with a two-part epoxy. While the epoxy was drying, I stuck the Phillips screwdriver down into the head of the screw and before it fully cured, removed that screw. That makes it possible to remove the servo from the horn should you ever need to replace it. Again, like the jaw servo, the method for attaching this one is basically the same. Just add hot glue wherever the servo is touching the skull and then another bead around the outside to solidify it. You can see the big gap that was left when I pulled the head off, something that you can avoid by just screwing it out. I'm just kind of eyeballing, pun intended, the position of these LEDs for the eyes. As you can see here, I made kind of a mess out of the right eye socket. I ended up drilling way too many holes in the complete wrong place. But not all hope is lost. Using some baking soda and super glue, I was able to create a hard plastic-like substance that allowed me to redrill the hole exactly where I wanted it. I definitely should have layered this using a very thin layer of baking soda, super glue, baking soda, super glue. Because the super glue didn't seem to soak all the way through to the bottom layers of baking soda, making this wall pretty thin. But it worked out okay, so I moved on to the next step, which was painting. I added some detail around the teeth and blackened both eyes and the nose. One thing you might want to consider is thinning your paints. It was a lot harder to clean up the extra paint around the teeth than if I had used a thinner paint or added some thinner to this paint. I'm soldering these two 3 volt LEDs in series so that I can run them safely off of 5 volts. That way, I don't have to have a separate power supply for the servos and the lights. I'm using a piece of ribbon cable out of an old computer case that I found for wire management. Six of the wires will run the two servos and the last two will be for these LEDs. A little dab of super glue on each eye, and they're ready to go. And then again, I'm using the super glue and baking soda method to seal up the skull.
Once it's dry, I clean up the extra with a paper towel and you can almost not even tell that I opened this up. I'm really impressed with this method. All that's left now is to reinstall the head to the body and give it a test. Alright folks, that's going to be it for part one. If you liked this video, why not give it a thumbs up? And if you're interested in seeing what's next for our little bony friend, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified when I upload part two. Make sure to check out the link below to a parts list and a bit more information if you want to try this at home. Thanks for watching, and remember, whatever that is, we can build that.